I always loved strategy games. See, I'm more of a thinking man than anything else. I like having the broad overview of a situation, time to plan my moves ahead of time and know what's coming. I've never been into shooters and racing games and all the games that have a bit of a rush to them. I've never been into cars and shooters for me always seems like it's the same variation of Hey, there's a dude you don't like, point your gun at him, hold down the trigger and then he goes away. I know not all shooters are like that, but that's at least why I've never been able to get into them. And the only reason I've ever been able to play Borderlands for any significant amount of time is because of the humor of the story and the co-op, the loot and the levels. I like seeing things grow slowly from weak as a kitten to battling dragons and stuff like that. I'm not very competitive and I don't play online very much because I just can't be arsed with the bullshit of random people on the internet. When I play online, I play mostly with my friends and we play co-op games. But I don't share taste in games with them all that much. They play games like Borderlands and Payday the Heist. Games I can't stomach for too long because I'm not really good at getting into the fray of things and stuff. And sure, Payday, you can be a bit more sneaky about it and... I'm the guy you want on the cameras and on the overlooks, telling you what's going on and keeping an eye on everything. But that's another reason why I don't play it too much, is the things I'm really good at gets boring at length. And the aforementioned assholes on the internet has really put a dampener on how many times we boot up a game of League of Legends. Enter Dungeon Defenders, an absolutely fantastic strategy, hack and slash co-op loot fest by Trendy Entertainment. Released in 2011 onto the Steam store, when this bad boy hit the scene there was nothing else like it. At least nothing that married the concept of hack and slash and strategy in the way that it did. It was a completely unique experience and probably why it drew so many people in and certainly why I started playing it and has been playing it for, well quite frankly far too long. It's the only game in a long time that me and my friends can play for so many hours at a time. That's why I was so pleasantly surprised when I saw Dungeon Defenders Eternity had been released to the Steam store. Not knowing what it was at the time, I quickly read through the blurb and was taken in by the allure of a retooled and rebalanced experience. I quickly bought the game and booted it up and I was met by an intrusive overlay, a laggy server, ripped out features and good old fashioned bugs. And that's why I'm here today. I'm gonna take a long judging stare at Dungeon Defenders Eternity and find out is it really just a pile of garbage or is there a reason to come back into Dungeon Defenders or for that matter experience it for the first time. In my opinion you could split Dungeon Defenders into two main game modes, online and offline, referred to as local. In local you can play with player made content from the Steam Workshop. I've never really done this myself but I've seen some pretty cool maps out there and you know, who doesn't like modding? Then there's online again split into two parts, open and ranked. In open you can also play with the Steam Workshop's player made content, but now with the added bonus of playing with other people. In ranked you play on Trendy's official servers and everything's saved to the cloud. Ranked gives you slightly better loot and it's the only way you can earn Steve achievements. These are put in your tavern as trophies and I always found that very cool because I could see the effort I put into the game displayed literally right in front of me. A really cool feature of the game is that even though you're playing on these official servers and you're technically online, you never really feel this. Because whenever you're playing on your own with split screen or not, you are able to pause the game just like you expect to be able to when you're playing on your own. Then when the game detects people coming in from the internet playing with you, it simply disables this feature. The game is overall very well designed. Since it is a game all about the loot, you quickly fill up your forge with all kinds of crap. So you've been given the ability to make folders to more easily sort and manage all this. You can lock the stuff you want to save for later and then with one button press sell everything else off to gain some mana. The maps are also well designed. Of course starting with a small map with only one crystal to defend and then slowly adding more enemies and bigger maps and more crystals to defend. What really took me in was the way that you can almost make classes in the game or you could at least say that everybody has a role to play. 
The way the stat system is built up makes it easy to define these rules and nobody ever feels like they're redundant. You can have an all builder, attack damage or buff character and you can all upgrade and repair defenses. One of my favorite strategies is giving a genie that gives mana based on damage done to enemies to one of my characters with a ranged attack and then gathering mana from afar making it easy for me to stand around turrets and maintain them. We have tons of hours discussing strategies on turrets and stats and stuff like that, setting up our defenses, seeing them fall down and then rebuild to try and close weak spots. The game can be very relaxing, played on your own or a complete chaos demanding a quick response time to upgrade and maintain your defenses. I'll go into more detail in the proper review of course, but I just want to give you a quick overview of a few of the things I really liked. And with this Dungeon Defenders Classic was a great success, at least in my book, and on the surface this all looks very good, but looks can be deceiving, for as with the success of many a title in the digital age, comes a visit from everybody's favorite money hole, the dreaded downloadable content. Now DLC on its own is not a bad thing, it becomes a bad thing when it's pumped out by a desperate company about to go under, or as a tool to piecemeal a game to maximize profits. The DLC for Dungeon Defenders, at least in my opinion, all added something to the game. Be it new maps with new features, a character with a completely new playstyle, or challenge maps with new game modes. And I say this fully aware of my disposable income and my first world privileges. Looking at the 3 year lifespan of the game, I never thought it was too much of it, and I never thought the price was too high for the work put in. But this still marked the beginning of the end as Dungeon Defenders was a game that started on top and quickly tumbled downhill as Trinity found himself bogged down by two very big issues, game balance and hacking. I never experienced any game hacking first hand, but I know that it happened because it was one of the biggest complaints from the community. I dodged all this by playing only with friends or on my own. But what is undoubtedly the biggest game killer and fun ruiner is the balance of the game, or more importantly the lack thereof. The game on its own plays just fine and you could get through the entire campaign by yourself with just about any character and on just about any difficulty. The problem arises when you try to do survival and especially nightmare survival. Survival is a game mode where you put yourself on your towers to the test. Going over 25 to 30 waves of increasing difficulty and insanity, it's a fun end game game mode with a lot of loot and carnage. Nightmare difficulty was released with the first Atani Shard DLC and makes the game much much harder, far harder than Insane ever was, and it adds two new enemies that prove to be too much for both the players and Trendy to handle, the spiders and the ogre copters. The spiders are annoying little critters that web you and your turrets making both much slower. It also disables all your special abilities. The Ogrecopters are really just helicopters that carry ogres. They'll drop these when they die or when they reach the safe place to put them down. Both saw themselves tweaked a fair bit, the ogres dropped from a crashing copter lost half their health and the spider's webbing had a much shorter duration. Overall game tricking was of course also done, for example the mobs got a despawn timer for when they got stuck. And this never really sat well with me, why not try to get at the root of the problem and fix the pathing or AI problem? I say this of course not pretending for a moment to know what goes into game making, and the game does spawn hundreds of enemies, so maybe the problem wasn't easily fixed. But this was still really annoying when playing with hardcore turned on, meaning you can't respawn on the same wave you die, you had to sit there staring at a spider jumping into a wall waiting for it to despawn. But even with a whole bunch of tweaking, the game never really got balanced properly for endgame. Nightmare was far too hard to break into. The only strategies I ever really found was either having items given to me and I never liked that. There's of course also the player run shops, but by the time I tried buying anything from those, whatever market had been there for it was long gone. And stuff really wasn't an upgrade for late game, or they were suspiciously good. The third option was going into a late game map on Nightmare and surviving a few rounds, grabbing whatever loot was worth anything, rinse and repeat. And fair enough, a little bit of grind never killed anyone and it did feel like you could start doing Nightmare this way. But you quickly realized you weren't gonna go beyond a certain point because the numbers you needed to survive on Nightmare were so high that whenever you got a slight increase, it was never really felt. 
Me and my friends tried to do late game maps and the Atani Shot DLC maps on Nightmare Survival in the hopes of getting anything beyond the mythical tier, which is the first tier of late game. But that never ever ever seemed to drop and what did drop never had a stat increase that was felt. So in the end we just died on the same waves over and over again and it never felt like it was because our strategies were failing but more because the game was just getting way too hard for us. So in the end we stopped playing altogether and we have rarely been back to it ever since. So that's Dungeon Defenders, a great little game that came out of nowhere and blew me away. Now the important question is does Eternity hold up? Is it really a retool and rebalance of the original game? Does it fix all the problems that the original had while keeping all the good stuff? Well it's finally time to find out.